So today I'm talking about a P0, a 420 code, what it is and how you could go about fixing it. And so what is a P0, 420 code? Well, it's a catalyst system efficiency below threshold bank one. And so what does this mean? Well, basically there's what's called oxygen sensors and they're located down on the exhaust and they do two things. The first thing they do is they monitor how much oxygen was burnt off during combustion. And then the computer uses this information to adjust the air fuel ratio mixture that's going into the cylinders. And then the second thing they do is they monitor the catalytic converter. And when they see that the catalytic converter is not operating like it should be, that it's fallen below a set efficiency that it should be running at, they're going to report this information back to the computer, which then sets this P0420 code. And so it's going to have to be troubleshooted to know why. And if you have a V6 or V8 engine, the engine is going to have two banks. Bank one side of the engine is always the side of the engine with the number one cylinder. So if you Google your engine and like cylinder location or firing order or something like that, and you locate the number one cylinder on your engine, since there is differences, then that side of the engine is going to be bank one and the opposite would be bank two. If you have a four cylinder engine, then this wouldn't matter because there only be bank one. There won't be no bank two. And each bank on the engine is going to have its own catalytic converter. And there's also going to be two oxygen sensors on each bank of the engine. There's going to be sensor one, also called the upstream O2 sensor, that's located before the catalytic converter. And then there's going to be sensor two, also called the downstream O2 sensor, that's going to be located after the catalytic converter and sometimes right on it. And so what would be some possible causes of a P0420 code? Well, it could be a bad oxygen sensor. If an oxygen sensor goes bad, it might just be reporting bad information back to the computer. So the computer just thinks there's a problem when there isn't. It can also be a bad catalytic converter. If the catalytic converter goes bad, then it's gonna cause problems. If there's an exhaust leak up around those sensors, this can throw them off and cause them to get bad readings and things like this. So an exhaust leak can also cause a problem. Also keep in mind that there's some kind of problem with the engine. Like for example, there's an ejector that's leaking too much and it's sending fuel into the exhaust. Then this can clog up the catalytic converter and that can cause problems. Usually if that happens, you'll get other codes, but keep in mind that there's an engine problem that can also cause this issue. And so there's gonna be some different ways to go about troubleshooting this. The main things to troubleshoot with this code is check to see if the O2 sensors are working correctly or if there is some kind of issue going on with the catalytic converter. If you have an OBD2 scan tool, you can go and check it with the graph function on your scan tool. You can check to see what the O2 sensor's output is to the computer. For example, right here, this is bank one sensor one, bank one sensor two, bank two sensor one, and then bank two sensor two. And what you want to see with sensor one is the voltage going up and down like this. This would indicate that it's working correctly and that it's doing what it's supposed to be doing. If sensor one is really flat or really high or really low, then that's a problem. There's some kind of issue going on there. So these sensor ones, like here and here, these should be going up and down like this. The sensor two should be flatter. They shouldn't be reading too much oxygen coming out of the catalytic converter. When the catalytic converter is working the way it's supposed to be doing, there won't be that much oxygen coming out of it. And so for example, right here, this sensor two on bank one on this particular engine is working the way it's supposed to be doing. But on bank two, the sensor two is not working the way it's supposed to be working. So this would point to some kind of issue going on there. There's some good YouTube videos on this. I made some videos on this. I'll put a link down below in the description if you need to check that out. But if you have an OBD2 scan tool with the graph function like this, then you can use that to go troubleshoot it. Another way to troubleshoot this is kind of an old school way is basically when these catalytic converters go bad, they get all clogged up inside of here. Pieces of it come loose and they clog everything up inside of there. And so when this happens, when those pieces all come loose or it gets all clogged up inside of there, the temperature is going to be hotter before than after the catalytic converter because when it's working the way it's supposed to be working and after it warms up like about 20 minutes or so the temperature should be hotter after the catalytic converter than before it and so you can use one of these low-cost temperature guns you can let the engine run for like 20 minutes or so let that catalytic converter get real hot and then you read what the temperature is before it and after it and if the temperature is colder after the catalytic converter then there's some kind of issue going on with that cat it's clogged up or something like that. If you need one of these low cost temperature guns, I'll put a link down in the description below, but this is a common old school method just to quickly find out what's going on with the vehicle. And if it is having some kind of catalytic converter problem, I also made a video on this. I'll put a link down below if you need to check that out. Also when these catalytic converters, they get all clogged up and the engine's not gonna have the power like it once did because it's having to work harder to push the exhaust out. So some mechanics, when they think this is the problem, they'll break loose these bolts that's right in front of the catalytic converter just a little bit, like half an inch or so. Then they'll drive the vehicle around the block and just see if it has more power. Another thing to mention is that if you do think you have a catalytic converter problem, if you do think it's clogged up or some kind of issue going on with it, you can get a gas additive that's a cleaner that can go through and help the catalytic converter get cleaned out. 
There's some different types of cleaner, like Cataclean. That's a very popular one. I'll put some links down in the description below if you want to go check that out. And the results can vary with that cleaner. Some people have really good results and then other people don't. If you do use something like that Cataclean, be sure to take the vehicle out on the freeway or something like that. Because a lot of times people just do short hops, city driving type of driving. And that never really heats up that catalytic converter all the way sometimes and blows it out like it should. So if you do try that, try to take it out on the freeway or the highway and try to get it to blow out. But like I said, results can vary with that. And also keep in mind that if there's some kind of problem with the engine, if there is a leaky injector or something like that, and that can clog up the catalytic converter, it can cause you to get bad readings where you think the catalytic converter is clogged up, but it's really just like an injector leak or something like that. Although usually if that happens, you're going to get another code like a P0301 or an injector code or something like that. So if you are getting like an injector code on like cylinder one, or something along those lines, it can be a good idea to go check that out, do some tests on it, be sure that there's no problems going on there because the last thing on the list is going to be there's some kind of engine problem. And so that's basically it. I just wanted to give a basic overview of how you go about fixing a vehicle with the P0420 code. If you have anything to add, please comment down below. If you have any questions, ask me and I'll try to answer them. If this video helps you, please click like, please click subscribe and have a good day.